welcome to the Monday Monologue. We got an exciting topic this week. First, I want to apologize for kind of a drought of video content. We were working on this preamp. I had a business trip. Some family came in town to visit, so haven't had a lot of free time, but all that's out of the way. It's time to dig back into the tube fun. Got a a12 someone sent to me that we're going to do the whole A50 treatment to. We're going to dive into it, test it, see if we can do some stuff to it to make it even better than it comes out of the box, which I know we can. Preamp's done. Isn't it beautiful? Ooh. And it's shootout time. But first, tone controls. Where did they go? I don't know about you guys, but when I was growing up, every piece of hi-fi gear I had had some sort of a tone control on it, whether it was just a basic tone knob. A lot of them had bass and treble, had one amp that had a mid-range tone control on it. Then, like the 80s hit and thought I was in heaven with a graphic equalizer with like 12 sliders on it that you could shape the tone curve and everything. Now when you go look at mid to high level gear, all it has is a volume knob. So well, what happened to that? Well, I did some experimenting and I was tube rolling, trying to get the sound that I wanted out of my gear. And I decided after hearing some internet people raving about the little shit, shit Loki um, equalizer box said that's what I need won't have the tube roll anymore just turn a knob or two be right there guys it didn't work it sounded I'm not going to say it sounded horrible I mean it was you know it was decent and some people may not really notice the difference or their systems may be so out of tune with the, the speakers to their amplifier, to their tubes, to their photo cartridge and stuff that it sounds better than what they had. But on a balanced system that has the right tubes with the right phono stage, with the right cartridge that all matches the speakers and you got the feedback tuned to the system, it sounds like a veil over the sound. And I know you hear that all the time. But I, I'm a photographer too, and I can relate it to a picture that doesn't have enough contrast. You can make it brighter, and you can make it darker, but you can't fix that micro contrast that a really good lens makes. And it's like putting a crappy filter over a lens. There's just something there that is kind of covering up the really great sound. So I ended up sending it back and I'm actually going to trash that company a little bit. They have a very, very misleading statement on their website. It says, you know, try our product, satisfaction guaranteed or your money back. Well, they don't tell you, except in a little tiny fine print, that there's a 20% restocking fee. So when you're talking about a $200 box, you try it, you don't like it. Not only do you have to pay the shipping back, you've had to pay the shipping to get it to you, the shipping back, and then 40% or 20% on top of that, which was another 40 bucks. So it ended up costing me about 60 bucks to try that box and send it back. Shame on you, shit. If you're going to have a claimer like that on your website in big print on each page, you need to also say, but hey, you're going to have to give us 20% of our money back for sending it back to us. So never buying any more of their products. And if they had been up front about that, I wouldn't have minded, but... I never saw the little fine, I mean, it's literally, go look on their website, it's literally fine print, and they got this giant box on every page, satisfaction guaranteed or your money back for 60 days. 
that's wrong. So anyway, back to tone controls. There's a reason why the really high-end, you know, mid-level to high-end gear doesn't have tone controls anymore. I'm not sure there's a way of implementing it that doesn't have this kind of veil over the whole range. And yeah, it's a pain in the butt to have to roll tubes and try different phono cartridges and play around with feedback resistors inside the amplifier to get the tone you want. But once you nail it, like if you know a certain album and what it should sound like and you get it nailed down where that album sounds good, everything will sound good. And I've never had a album that I needed to jack up the treble or the bass or whatever. And if I did, it was just a bad recording. So, long and short, that's why none of this gear has tone controls anymore. They figured out that it definitely hurts the sound of the system. And there's other ways to shape the tone curve that don't have those problems. So anyway... I'm super excited to get back into this. Gonna do this preamp shootout. I'm excited too about the idea of designing an amplifier specific to use a preamp. And even my next project, which is the using the old globe tube products for the 1930s in an amplifier. And I was worried about I might not be able to get enough drive to drive the 45 with the Globe tri driver tube. Got a preamp now where I can jack up the input. So, you know, you know, maybe that is using a crutch. And we may look at other ways of doing it to make that an integrated amp. But I do feel like that if this has the drive that I think it's going to, that I can probably eliminate one of the stages in my push-pull KT88 amp and possibly just drive straight to the inverter. But we'll see. So anyway, hope you're enjoying my channel. If you are, please subscribe. Please like the video. Subs are coming along great. Got some action on the forum. Go check that out. I'd love to see your builds. I'm sure y'all are building cool stuff or you've bought things, you know, that you want to show and tell with us. Love to see it. Like to see your systems, you know, what what does your little system installed look like? You know, if you've made some do-it-yourself speakers, love to see them. So go to the forum, post some pictures, show us what your stuff looks like. Let's have some fun sharing this stuff around. And I'll see you next week on the Monday Monologue.